Big shout out to Stay Sharp Guide. I use their sharpeners to get my broadheads ready for this trip. Thirty hours ago, I was leaving my house in Iowa, and now here I am flying out to a remote camp in southern Newfoundland to try to take my first moose with a bow. Adventure bow hunting's in my blood, and I've been dreaming about this one for a long time. My pilot is the renowned outfitter Bob Effort of Effort's Hunting Adventures. He runs one of the largest and most successful hunting operations in all of Newfoundland. I just love the experience of hunting in completely different environments. In the past year, I've been blessed to bow hunt in the Black Hills of South Dakota with my friend Cody, the thick swamps of Florida with my buddies Mike and Tyler, back home in the rolling hills of Iowa with all my friends there, and now here in this majestic territory. The scenery is just breathtaking, so unlimited, untamed, and untouched. I feel so blessed by God to be living out yet another dream like this. There's a scripture in the Old Testament where King David says, Who am I, Lord, that you have brought me this far? That's exactly how I'm feeling right now. There's my awesome guide, Glenn. And here's our home for the week. Man, you gotta love the rustic charm in this beautiful setting. Each morning begins with a boat ride to a different part of the lake. I love just soaking in all the scenery around me. Then there's hours and hours and miles and miles of walking over the rough and rugged terrain. And even more hours of glassing from vantage points all over the area, examining every nook and cranny of the ponds, peaks, rivers, rocks, woods and wilderness all around us, just searching for bull moose. It's really cool being so remote that there's just very little hunting pressure way back here. Even this mature woodland caribou bull felt really comfortable walking up to within about 20 yards of us. By the end of day four, we'd glass nearly 60 moose. Man, I've never seen so many moose in my entire life. But only a few of them were bulls, and the bulls we did see were miles away from us. The weather just seemed too warm for the bulls to get up and move during the day. And since it's only the first week of September, the rut wasn't even supposed to kick in until the following week. And if I'm really honest, man, I was starting to feel the tug of discouragement. I was just facing the reality that I might not even get an opportunity to, to put a stock on a bull on this trip of a lifetime. But on the morning of day five, our luck started to change. The weather had cooled off a lot overnight and it was overcast. And after walking a few miles to our most promising area, we finally spotted a decent bull only a mile or so away in the river valley below us. And unlike the other ones we'd seen, he wasn't on the far side of this big rushing river. Either we had to figure out how to get down the ridge and through the thick timber to get to him or hope that he would come to us. So even though it was too early for the rut, Glenn tried letting out a few cow calls. In 
and immediately the bull started to rake a tree with its antlers. And when it did that, Glenn's face just lit up and he said, he's hooked. And then the bull slowly started to come our way. We guessed he would try to circle downwind from us to our left, so we backed up and set up an ambush just off the ridge where we thought he would go. And then about 45 minutes later, I could faintly hear him letting out some moans as he was coming up the ridge toward me. And then my heart was pounding out of my chest. I got down on my knees and tucked into some cover. And then I started to hear some branches breaking. And then I saw the tips of his antlers. And then I turned on the GoPro. This is where it would be nice to be able to afford a cameraman. But until I can do that, the GoPro mounted to my bow does a pretty good job. I had to hold it full draw for about half a minute because he was hidden behind this tree 40 yards in front of me. I was just waiting for him to take one more step and hoping he wasn't going to wind us because he was dead downwind. Drilled him with that first shot at 40 yards, and then Glenn did some calling to get him to stop, and he stopped at 70 yards, and I just wanted to put a follow-up arrow in him if I could. Let's zoom in and see those shots again in slow motion. It was pretty easy to follow the blood trail, even with a really thick cover, because it just brushed up against so many of these branches. Finally got a moose. This is my first moose. I'm up here in uh, Newfoundland hunting with Efford's Hunting Adventures and with my buddy Glenn. He's been guiding me, been doing a great job all week. And we've seen so many moose. This is the first week in September. They're really not in the rut yet. It's an archery only hunt. We've seen over 60 moose in the first four days here, but we've only seen a couple bulls and they've been like over a mile away and we just had no no play on them so i was feeling pretty desperate to be honest and then we saw this one it was the first one inside of a mile and not across a big raging river and so uh glenn let out a call even though it's not really the rut we just kind of took a hail mary and, and it started raking its antlers and so we thought oh man it's responding and so we called again and it started to slowly come our way so played a bit of a, a game of cat and mouse for a while And then Glenn got behind me and kept calling and it started coming up and then it popped out came out the wrong direction from what I was expecting. But I was able to zip an arrow right through it. I mean, it was, it looked like a perfect shot. It was with the, uh, the iron wheel single bevel just passed right through and it ran off and then Glenn stopped it with, uh, with another call. And I didn't even have time to range it. I just, I just guessed for 60 yards and just had a little uh, window to shoot. And that was with a Sever 1.5. And I didn't even know I hit it, but I actually hit it in the front shoulder with, uh, with the Sever 1.5 as well. And so then it, uh, it ran off and went down in this thick stuff and piled up. And here it lies, my first moose. I'm just so excited to get it. I know it's not a giant, all right? Uh, but man, it's it's mine. <laughs> it's a, the first one we've had even remotely within range. So I'm really excited about it. September 6th, moose down, yeah. 
Man, there's not much as satisfying as walking out with some antlers on your back. And then what's really cool is that's all you have to carry on your back because at efforts you just use the sat phone to call in a chopper and they come and pick up all your meat for you and take it back to base camp. <laughs>